day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. short that's what i'm saying we all fall short in some areas as believers through our yes. life and but, that's, and that, that's where the continuous sin i'm saying there's people continually sinning in different areas and therefore if if the bible says you sin at one point you sin at all points that means that that means all of us continually sinning and then we're all going to hell because we can't do it that's why he does it that's why I depend right, on him. It. That's why I depend exactly. on him. I can't depend on me. I, and, and the scripture that before you came, uh, I think I read it to you though. Know, uh, this one right here, First Corinthians chapter six. The justification is coming from him, not from me. This is uh, verse nine through eleven. This is uh, First Corinthians. Yeah, we read. We read. Uh, okay, good. You see, what I'm saying is that my sanctification doesn't come from me. My righteousness does not come from me. My justification does not come from me. And if, if his justification is not good enough for me to get to heaven, I got a problem. Because my yeah, justification I, won't get it. My there, righteousness there's won't get it. The so, significance so. of the man Jesus Christ, the preeminence of this man Jesus Christ, becomes more and more evident. Yeah. There's one door. There's one justification. Come on, brother. Come out. What is it's John 14, 6? Jesus said, I am the way, the it, truth, it, and the light. It's easier for a camel to go through a, 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 a pool of a needle than, than, than to get in hell. Right. That's why he said, I am the way, the mm -hmm. truth, and the light. In other words, I depend on him, not me. If I keep falling short because I continually sin, and I'm saying sin is in any area, right? Because the Bible said, be not deceived, God is not mocked, but whatsoever man soweth, that should also reap. He's still saying this, I need, that's why I need Jesus daily. That's why he gave his Lord's prayer. He said, give me this day, right? I like that, I like the Lord's prayer in the sense of saying, give me this day, this day, right? And then I like the fact he said, forgive me of my sin, because he, I'm dressing my sin daily to him. And I, I, that's why I pray it in the morning. I pray it at night because I either, either sin intentionally or sin, in, you know, unintentionally. But I, I bring that to the altar every day to him. And sometimes you might have to bring it to the altar. To, to what, what you, 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 huh? And what you do, what you do. Is that what all us got to do? Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. But not everyone does. Oh yeah, well, but see that that's the difference between right between somebody that's taking advantage of this gift, right? Because the gift is that's what Jesus Christ is a gift. Either you take it or you don't take it, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, so all I'm just telling for for me, I'm just saying for me, I need it. I need I receive the gift. I need the gift. And I need that gift daily because of the different type of things that I may go through. Uh, that, that 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 I'm not strong enough to overcome by myself. So I don't think that I don't think that the it's not the fact of, of continuing sinning in different areas. It's continuing repenting and helping him deliver me from areas that I gotta deal with. And I'm saying there's so many areas you gotta deal with. There's so many. Uh, but he's 
His grace and his mercy is what makes a difference to me. You know, that's why he said you can go boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah, Ellen, why do I gotta go to, why is the throne of grace? I think, yeah, I think that it's, it's, it's him. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I gain a greater respect. I praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ many years ago, but now I begin to really realize, uh, man, how essential this one man, Jesus of Nazareth, is. Without him, there is no fellowship with the it Father. None. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come with the Father but by him. No it's not our works, but it's his, his finished works. Come on, man. You know, it's not, it's not, I can't work my way into heaven. I can't I actually work my way into hell, but I can, uh, my, my behavior is not my mark. I mean, my, 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 what is it? my righteousness is as filthy rags. So the best that I can do is still like period materials. I mean, so it's not on me. No. It's on my submission to him. Yeah. It's, it's my being clothed in his blood, washed, having my robe washed in the blood of the lamb. Yeah. And I think that becomes our focus more so than anything else because one of the things that in the New Old Testament there was a lot of thou shalt not. Thou shalt but not. in the New Testament the focus is on thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind. And if we focus there, come on now. That thing concerning Jesus of Nazareth, the rest yeah. of the stuff kind of like gets swept up in it. Come on now. So you know, uh, it, it, I think we really have to begin to. Focus on our relationship with him. Yes. Make sure that we're pouring out everything we got to him. Yes. The rest of this stuff is going to like, it's going to find its own way. I think you know, so. Because he's right there to talk to you. He's telling you, we don't serve a dead God. No. Our God is alive and he speaks to us on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is where the sin thing comes in that it, it impedes the, the conversation, it impedes the communication process. Exactly. So as long as we get our ears on, as long as we're tuned in, He's going to tell us what we need to do on a moment by moment, real time basis. And, and you know, I like, on us. Yeah. And, and I like that thing, Brother Asley, you one time said it before about putting on that whole armor of God. See, yeah. see, I think that's the problem sometimes with a believer to understand is if you don't put this armor on, <laughs> and you, and you know, it's like going to be in, it's like me being in the army. Cause you have folks that don't do that too much, but me being in the army, I can't go to battlefield without my my hat, my cavalry, my face mask, my gas mask, my my weapon, you know. But believers understand that you are in a warfare. Yes. And you have to put on your armor every day: the breastplate of righteousness, the sword. Right? You got to put the shield of faith on because that's how you fight the battle. You know. And I even put this right here because a lot of cases I don't think people know they're in a warfare is this one right here. Second Corinthians chapter 2. I'll put it See up it. here. I'll put See it up It's so much easier in the airports. The only thing you got to do is just get on the plane. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and hold the army protected. And stay, and, all right, now we drop y'all off and come back out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but hey, the only uh, thing you got to do is stay in the plane. We're going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, the, well, not unfortunately, if, if believers understand the play in the in the spiritual war, world is that it's, it's staying in the spirit in Christ. Yeah, you body Christ. Right. Off, you can take yeah. off. Amen. Because yeah. see, I put down here, verse uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. So though we walk in the flesh, and we already talked about in that flesh, well, it's no good thing, right? <laughs> but I, I think we read that, right? In the flesh, there's one of those things. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty, but through who else? Yeah. God. Yeah. To do what? To pull down what? Pull down a stronghold. So my stronghold could be lying. My stronghold could be drinking. My stronghold could be uh, uh, adultery or lust or whatever. Those are the strongholds that every believer has to deal with. But be mighty through God for the pulling down the stronghold. Look at this, it says right here, Elder says, cast it down what? Every imagination. It's cast down imagination oh. in oh. every high thing yeah. that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. 
So, so the knowledge of God is that I am not under the law. There is a man that, that to me that, that statement is kind of like so far reaching it governs our lives because we talk about those six inches between the ears or how many ever inches most of the bigger or smaller heads uh, have. That fight is either won or lost in your mind. Come on, man. It and, like and so, yeah, so I mean, even if we had the conversation going on earlier, uh, the manifestations in our flesh are going to be a result of what we're actually experiencing in our thought Come life. On. So it, there's a lot that we have, we play, we've been playing with for several months. <laughs> how, how powerful our thought life is in the manifestations of what we're going to actually go through. Yeah, and, 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 and for me, this COVID thing has, has, has really been a kind of cap on it. And a lot of the illnesses and stuff that I've had to deal with over the last few several months. Because it seems ironic to me that I continue to talk about healing, but now I'm continuously sick. And I get asked the Lord, like, what's going on with that? He said, well, you didn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you can't speculate. You got, we're going to make you experts. So you keep talking and let's see what happens with it. But, uh, but the reality of it is, is that we embrace these concepts, these principles, these laws, the law of, 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 of sin and death, the law of, of life in Christ Jesus. Man, can you imagine that we embrace Christ Jesus and walking in this oh. thing and seeing like this man raised from the dead after three days on his own? Come on. This man rose a four day dead man from the grave. It's Come hard on. for your mind to go in certain directions when you have embraced these the, concepts. The power of him. Yes. The power. Yes. Yes. And that is who, that really is who we are or who we have become. Because it says that Jesus of Nazareth was made a quickening spirit. Uh -huh. it, it, the first Adam was a living I mean, a, 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 a soul, living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So he has the ability to bring us into this realm of experience. Yes, sir. Yes, His sir. dimension of what life is, this life in, in, in abundance. Yes, in sir. abundance. And so we are aligning ourselves now. What what is, what does keeping the law do for us? What does breaking the law do for us? What does Christ do to to, to rectify whatever issues we had with the law and keeping it or not keeping it? What's the results of it? What does it look like? Is it somebody like Edison saying like I ain't gonna die? I'm gonna go to sleep. Come on. <laughs> I just been dead already. Like forget it. They're gone. Come They're gone. Come but Come these on. are the things that are happening in our minds. In our and, I, and I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna shut up. There's one scripture that kind of caught my attention in the new in Revelation. It says they died for fear of what was going to come upon them. Yeah, they ran. It had actually happened, no. but their minds were so <laughs> powerful yes, that it manifested something that was the end of, that brought about their demise yes, in the earth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a, that's amazing. Once we get these tons of increases now. God only knows what we're going to see. Exactly. And I think a little fact is that just a reminder for all believers to always dwell in Him. You know, Amen, man. I got to dwell in Him. Amen. And your know, Galatians said, if you be in Christ. If you be in Christ. See, in your see, head. So that's why you got to stay in Christ. Yes. To be delivered from all the different areas that you have to deal with. So yes. that's, I, that's why I want to make sure those are listening. And I'm talking to people on Facebook listening and so forth, is you have, you fall short, you sin in some areas daily, keep on sinning, but if you stay in Christ, he's going to deliver you, and, but I don't know, his only one, I thought I don't know, I don't know when he's going to deliver somebody from lying, I don't know when he's going to deliver somebody, I don't know when that happens. But I know that I can't put the time limit on myself. I got to just stay in Him through the rest of my natural life. Forever, yeah. Because my eternal life has been sealed by Him. Yes. But if I walk away now, brother, brother, if I walk away from Him, now I'm in jeopardy. And that's all I'm trying to say. I'm in jeopardy if I'm an adulterer. If I'm a liar, if I'm a cheater, or whatever, if I stay in Him, I can be delivered in due season through Him. Not my season, but His season. 
And that's why I like the fact that the gospel, the good news is I have him to be delivered from my area. And I am not going to let the devil tell me you don't qualify.